Hello, and thank you guys for tuning in to Girl Let's Talk Atlanta Pop Up Talks. Tonight we have a theme. The theme is blue jeans. Why blue jeans? Because mom jeans matter. Mom Jeans Fight PPD is a global collaboration. Um, Mom Jeans Fight PPD is a research study developed by postpartum depression. It is an international group of academic clinicians and scientists committed to understanding the interaction of genes and environment to predict which women are at risk for postpartum depression. If you would like to take part in this research study, please visit their website, momgenesfightppd.org. There you can see all the resources on how you can donate and how you can be a part of the case study. It's important that we try to do as much as possible for our women, especially mothers who are suffering from postpartum depression. We don't know. I don't know if it's hereditary or not, um, but Mom Jeans is making an effort to discover how we can um, fight postpartum depression in women. So guys, take an opportunity to Look up momjeansfightppd.org. Also, if you would like more information, visit them on social media on Instagram at momjeansfightppd at Instagram. Um, And also check out their content. They have a lot of content that they drop on a daily basis that help mom help moms with postpartum depression. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for being a part of the Mom Jeans Fight PPD movement. Again, we're rooting for you guys. We're rooting for you moms who are out there fighting postpartum depression. We know that sometimes you cannot help it and things happen, but there's someone, there's organizations out here that are fighting for you guys. Thank you, Mom Jeans Fight PPD. We appreciate your support. We appreciate you guys for taking a stand on fighting postpartum depression for all women. Hey, everyone. This is Trina B with Girl Let's Talk Atlanta. Today, we are doing our pop-up talks with... We have seven beautiful women joining us today. And we are going to just talk about everything that they do um, in their industry. So these women are phenomenal women. They are all in different industries. And we just want to share a little bit about these women to start off with. So first, we're going to start with Dr. Connery. Hey, doctor. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Can you tell everyone who you are and what you do? Hey, guys. So my name is Dr. Fuller. I'm a psychiatrist as well as a sex therapist. And I teach people how to be comfortable with their sexuality. I work on people's low and high libido, as well as I work for a pharmaceutical company. So I work with people with severe mental illness. All right. Awesome. Awesome. And next we have Miss Kathy. Hey, Kathy. How are you? Hi, everybody. This is Kathy with Comfort in the Storm. We are a child sex abuse prevention and awareness training center, and we are really helping to end child sex abuse, one community, one family, one social media post at a time. So we welcome you to give us a call if you want to schedule a training with us. We can be found on all social media platforms, Comfort in the Storm. All right, awesome, awesome. And next we have Miss Mo McKenzie. Look, I got lipstick all on this thing. Thank you. All right. Hi, Mo. How are you? I'm great. How you doing? I'm well. Can you tell everyone who you are and what you do? All right, everyone. My name is Mo McKenzie. I'm from Jersey. Um, and I'm a wardrobe stylist, designer, boutique owner, fashion influencer, all of that. So, yeah. She here. All right. Yes. All right, next we have Miss Jamitria. Is it Jamitria? Yan Mitra. Yan Mitra. <laughs> hey, Queen, how are you? Can Bye. you tell everyone who you are and what you do? Hey, guys, my name is Yan Mitra Waddell. I'm the only Live Past Crazy Special, so what better place to be than here with me? I am the host of the Fearless Morning Show on Facebook, weekdays at 7 15 a.m. I am a mindset mediator, so we work with ladies to help change their mindset from victim to survivor to overcomer to thriving and living. 
All right, awesome, awesome. And next we have Miss Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm well. Can you tell everyone what do you do and who you are and what you do? Yes. Hey, everybody. I'm Free Spirit Tiffany B. I am the owner of the Fitness Collective ATL in Atlanta. I teach yoga, do fascial stretch therapy, energy work, Reiki. So it's all about healing and loving yourself from the inside out, not just the outside in. All right. Awesome. Awesome. And next we have LaShonda. Hi. How are you, Queen? Can you tell everyone who you are and what you do? Hi, everyone. My name is LaShonda Council Rogers, and basically, I put the personal in personal injury. I'm an Atlanta personal injury attorney, and I handle auto accidents, trucking accidents, and daycare abuse claims. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So I wanted to talk to you about personal injury. What made you get into the injury field, into this field as a lawyer? or? Yeah. You know, that's a very interesting question, and people ask me about it all the time, and I kind of fell into becoming a personal injury lawyer. I started out my career as a corporate lawyer, and uh, back in 2008, when the real estate market crashed, I lost my job, and one of my friends, who is a doctor, one of her family members was um, injured in a crash, and she asked me, well, can you help my family member and I at first I said no because I thought personal injury attorneys were ambulance chasers and I did not want to be an ambulance chaser I did not go to school to chase ambulances okay. and um, but I helped her on and I realized that I had a passion for helping people well I always knew that but I was just chasing the wrong thing before you know I wanted to do what I thought I was supposed to do as a lawyer, you know, work at a corporate law firm, work, work, work all day, and not see my clients, but I realized that wasn't me, and I was able to help people, and it just kind of started at my kitchen table, and now we've exploded, and we're taking over the Atlanta market. Um, so if someone were interested in having you um, fight their case, how would they uh, go about doing that? Do you have, like, a consultation, or do you... Um, like, what's the process of that? Oh, it is so easy. We offer a free consultation, which is a case review. You call me. Um, my number is 404-526-8857. Or you can go to our website at www.ourfirmcares. Or you can find me at um, on Instagram at Legally LaShonda. And we'll talk to you about your case and see if it's something that we can help you with. And there's no fee to you until we win your case. And trust me, if we take you on, we're, we're going to win your case. So there's it's a win-win situation. All right, awesome. So I hear a lot of lawyers and a lot of um, commercials talk about, you know, what you just said. You do not pay unless you win your case. So how does that work? Do you work? So if you, doesn't, if you don't win a case for the client, then that means that you don't get paid? Correct. Okay, all right, right. y'all. <laughs> right. And so that's why, one, I, I'm a people person, and I want to help people. And two, it gives us that extra incentive to work hard for our clients because we know at the end of the day, if we don't do right by our clients and our clients aren't happy, we don't get anything. And so we leave no stone unturned, and our clients, they become our family and if you look us up, we have five-star Google ratings, and that's really important to us because our clients are just not a number. We really, really dive deep, and they're just lifelong family members. Okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you, LaShonda. We're going to get right back with you, okay? <laughs> All right, so guys, you're going to Miss Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany. Hey. So you are in the fitness industry, correct? Yes. So how did you get started in the fitness industry? And what type of fitness do you specialize in again? So, uh, let's see. I started off as a dancer, really. So okay. once I was injured as a teenager, I started doing cheerleading. And then the next logical step for, like, extra cash and everything, I was like, I'm going to be a trainer. Okay. So I got 30 different certifications. I don't know. I got Zumba, <laughs> pole, Piloxing, like, all the things you can think of until I found yoga. So now I specialize in yoga, vinyasa yoga, um, which is a power yoga that you can slow down if you need to and you can add in some more stuff if you need to. And then I also do stretch therapy, so recovery and 
getting the body back to its optimal like performance rate. Okay. So stretch therapy. How so how does someone know if they need to you said if they were like injured in like an accident or something? So how would they know that they need stretch therapy versus like regular yoga or if they need like a chiropractor? So the good thing about a stretch therapist, well one that studies is <laughs> it's a mixture between like massage therapy, physical therapy, and some chiropractic care. If you know, if you do joint balancing, for which I also do, um, so you are gonna get the best of both worlds, and then learn how to prevent injury in the future. But it could also be a chronic pain, or it could just be like you want to, you know, understand why does this hip rotate forward, or why is this knee always hurt, something like that. Awesome, awesome. So how does one find you um, and to take advantage of your services? They can find me on Instagram at freespirit underscore Tiffany or can visit our website www.truealignlife.com and if you want to come and practice in person, we have the fitness collective underscore ATL on Instagram. So that's a lot. <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome. So all the links will be posted. The Instagrams will be posted. Um, do you offer, like, any consultations or anything like that? Like, how do, like, so once they reach out to you, do you set up, like, an appointment, like, meeting in yes. person? And, like, okay, so meeting in person, y'all know this corona is real out here, okay? So how is that, how do you do the stretch therapy right now in these times? So we have... I have sanitizing spray everywhere, Lysol wipes, um, method wipes. I try, try to use the plant-based stuff, but, you know, just as an added layer, my mom bought, like, a bunch of wipes before. Um, so I do that, and I also burn sage, which is antibacterial. A lot of people don't know that. Um, yes. <laughs> And then I only have one person in at a time on the table because you do have to get on a, similar to a massage table, uh, but it's ergonomic. So you, you know, one person at a time. You can wear your mask if you feel comfortable. Otherwise, I'm taking the temperature, and we're good. Okay, awesome, awesome. So next we're going to go to Jamitria. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, y'all. All right, so you said that you are a host of a podcast. Yeah, Fearless Morning Show. Yes. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the podcast. So it is all about how to live past crazy because uh, I tell people I know crazy. Uh, I am a survivor of domestic violence, uh, mm -hmm. and my abuser was the pastor of my church. Oh, wow. And so my story is a little different. And so I just share my journey of how people can be in a crazy situation, but if you can apply some right steps that you can live past crazy, and you can start your journey on to whatever it is that you want it to be. You can define it however you want. You just got to start. So um, we have very raw conversations. There's no questions. That's off limits. I've heard it all. Like, why did you stay? How could you have a baby? Like, there's nothing I haven't heard. So I make it a safe place for, for women and or men to come and talk about or have their questions answered. Okay, awesome, awesome. Where can one find your podcast? Um, <clears throat> it is on Apple. It is on Stitcher. Wherever podcasts are found, it's called The Live Past Crazy Show. And then we do um, the Fearless Morning Show, which is another version of it, um, weekday 715 on Facebook. And it is um, under the Live Past Crazy Specialist. Okay. And then you also said that you, what was the other thing you said you did? Uh, that? Mindset Mediator. Okay. Mindset Mediator. Okay. Yes. So tell so, us about that. So Mindset Mediator, um, we go, I have what I call um, a self-care gangster guided journey. Okay. And so we do this guided journey together and we talk okay. about self-care okay. and we look at words that people have told us that we don't really know the meaning of, like abundance. You think it's a bad word, but you don't really know the meaning. So we look at that word, look at the definition, and then you decide what you want that word to mean to you. And so we just work on our mindset and picking words that fit us and who we want to be, not words that don't serve us anymore. Okay, awesome, awesome. So how can one be a part of that? Um, right now I have 
they can go to bit.ly um, Gangsta Care and they can get a free five day guided journey. They just need to sign up and every morning at 6 a.m. they'll get their prompt for their guided journey for that day. And they can join me on the Sister Rise Retreat, which is coming up October the 16th through the 18th, um, bit.ly forward slash Sister Rise. And at this retreat, we're going to be talking about what that self care journey really, really looks like and have those conversations where we're going to not only be interested and be inspired, we're going to be committed to do something about it. All right, awesome, awesome. Look, y'all, she got her bit.ly link on lock. Did you hear her say bit.ly? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I love it. Um, what are your, you have, what are your, your Instagram handles? Uh, Instagram, it is Jan Waddell, J-A-N-W-A-D-D-E-L-L. And it's also that on IGTV as well. It's Jan Waddell. Okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you. All right. So next we are going to go to Miss Mo McKenzie, the fashion stylist. Hey Mo, how are you? Hey. All right, so I'm back to you. Um, so how did you get started as a fashion stylist, and how did you get into the industry of working with so many people? Well, fashion styling has always been in my blood, mm-hmm. hence my mother, okay. who's here. Hey Mo. Um, <laughs> it's been from my mother to my grandmother. My grandmother would go to the grocery store with a full mink coat on. And she'd be like, child, I'm just going to get me some soup. And I'm like, Grandma, are you going to the store in a mink coat? So my mother, she walk out, decked out, everything. So I kind of inherited that and adapted that from those two women. Um, it's only natural. And from that on, I just developed my own style. Okay. Um, I love like going to like thrift, stop, thrift stores and shopping okay. and stuff and putting stuff together. And... From then, I took a, you know, I was finding myself, finding my own, you know, niche in fashion and where I want to go. And I'm a very different type of stylist. Like, I'm not your average, you know, want to do what everybody's doing. Right. I try to make my own trend, you know. Right. And every time I do it, people are like, I never thought about doing that. I never thought of doing this and that. Sometimes things that I think about putting together, I'll see it. And I'm like, I just thought about that. So... You know, so that's just how it's been. But I started, I worked in corporate America. I worked for um, Merrill Lynch for about six years. I got laid off. And from me laying off, I started my own t-shirt line. My t-shirt line was basically a gateway to help me connect to other different fashion stylists, fashion influencers, um, and celebrities as well. And reality stars. So from then on, I connected with someone said, hey, I want to start styling. And my friend, she was actually, she was a PR for the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. So she was like, well, I know someone. You come with me tomorrow as an industry party. You come with me, I'm going to introduce you to her. And we'll see if we can make a connection. Okay. Made the connection. She told me to show up to this spot the next day. Okay. And I showed up. And ever since then, that's what happened. All right. So I started out as an intern. And then I transitioned into my own as my own stylist. Okay, awesome, awesome. So what all services do you offer? Um, I offer, I, I do creative styling, creative directing, I do makeup, I do, I do hair, I sew. <laughs> I mean, I'm a one-stop shop. I got clothes, I got lashes, I got, I'm, about, I'm trying to get some hair. I'm, I, listen, I got, I'm trying to give you a one-stop shop, especially with COVID, you know, yeah. you want to be that convenient for everyone to where they can come you know, and get everything at one time instead of have to go here and go there, especially with people your customers feel safe with you. They can say, okay, I know this person and I'm comfortable with them and I've shot with them several times. So, um, yeah, I, I offer all kinds of services. I style babies. If you want me to do product styling, I do product styling. I don't have no limitations. I really like styling men. No offense to the women. Because the men don't require so much. The women is the hair. It's All the makeup, it's the jewelry, it's the accessories, it's the shoes. It's if she bloated, okay, we can't, we're not gonna wear this today. Right, we're gonna wear right. black, you know. So it's just, it's that's my my thing right now. I'm trying to challenge it to is to styling men. Okay. okay. So yeah, but I offer a lot of things. 
Okay, awesome, awesome. So if someone wanted to get a consultation with you, how would they go about doing that? Um, they can email me. Um, I prefer email. I don't want to give my phone number out. So they can email me at mo.mckenzie9 at gmail.com. All right, awesome, awesome. And you can go to my website, and the website is www.momckenziestylesinc.com. Instagram, Mo McKenzie Styles. So everything is just Mo McKenzie. All right, Ms. Mo McKenzie. We're going to get back to you. We're going to move it along to Ms. Kathy. All right, guys. So you, some of you guys may have um, heard Ms. Kathy and saw Ms. Kathy on our previous shows. But Ms. Kathy is back with us today. And she's going to talk about what she does as a child sex advocate. So, Ms. Kathy, can you tell everyone again who you are and um, what you do? Hello everybody, I'm Kathy with Comfort in the Storm and we do child sex abuse prevention and awareness training and today's tip is check out your surroundings. Uh, 90% of children who are sexually abused are abused by someone that they know, love, and trust and so therefore as a parent, a caregiver, or just anyone who's responsible for the protection of a child you need to make sure that you have thoroughly vetted the people in your children's lives. And that means you have to be willing to vet even those closest to you. You have to be willing to consider that you may not know a person as well as you think you do, even your family members. So if your child is spending time with grandparents, cousins, a daycare provider, anybody that they're spending time with, you need to be sure that that person is a safe contact for your child. And so that means you're gonna need to spend some time vetting them. And if there's any reason that your child has you know, said, or for any reason if your child says, I'm not comfortable with that person, I don't like that person, take time to talk to your child and find out why, because they may be trying to tell you something that you're not seeing. So again, vet the people in your circle to make sure that they are indeed safe contacts for your children. All right, awesome, awesome. So do you offer like any any like home care or like how does like a parent get um, get in contact with you to kind of talk to their kids or either talk to students? Um, how would one go about doing that? We actually offer training seminars for small groups, large groups, organizations of every size, municipalities. So if you'd like to have a seminar uh, for your small group, your organization, your munis- munis- municipality, you can reach out to us at Comfort in the Storm blog at gmail.com. Or you can always just look us up on Instagram at Comfort in the Storm. We do have an email button there. We offer daily tips for parents, caregivers, um, on so, on uh, sex abuse awareness and prevention. So check out those tips. A lot of information is being provided there. And then if you need some one-on-one peer advocacy, you can always um, email us or contact us through our social media, and we'll be sure to get back to you as well. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Kathy. All right. So next we are with... Um, the doctor, okay, the sex educator. So we're gonna to talk to her about how does some sex education, okay? So how did you get into um, being a sex education therapist? <laughs> First of all, That's a popular question. <laughs> look, we all want to know that. How do you get into that? <laughs> so I was I graduated with my bachelor's and I moved to Raleigh, North Carolina, and I was going to Duke at NC State, and I was doing actually marriage and family counseling. And I absolutely hated it. I was a year in the program. I was like, this is not for me. I don't want to work with married couples because I won't get married if I continue working with them. And my mentor at the time was like, you know what? Why don't you do sex therapy? And I was only maybe 22, 23 at the time. I didn't even realize that that was a field that you could get into. So I took a class on human sexuality. I finished my master's. Um, I didn't really get to explore that career at the time because I ended up going to medical school. But once I completed medical school, during medical school, I was getting certifications in sex therapy, um, Karma Sutra, Tantric Sex, all that good stuff. And once I graduated, I said, you know what? I love talking to people about their sexuality. I love talking to people about intimacy. I love talking to people about being sensual. And I want to educate everyone. So I said, you know what? I'm going to combine my two passions with psychiatry and sex therapy. And that's where Mind Body Sex LLC came about. 
All right, awesome, awesome. So, uh, do you care to share like what was the most interesting question one of your clients or someone have ever asked you? <laughs> okay, so probably the top question that I get is how to ask a partner, a significant other, how to ask for a threesome. That's probably the one, and how t- they just want sex tips on how to have better sex. Those are probably the top two questions: how to revitalize their sex life. All right, awesome. So, how does one ask for a threesome? Okay, so <laughs> actually did a live on this not too long ago. It was crazy. Um, so, if your partner is not interested in having a threesome, then it really is probably not going to happen. But if they're a little curious, the way you can kind of g- engage them into it is one by watching porn and watching other threesomes. Um, and that's fun to watch with your partner just in general and then two having an open discussion and telling them your reasons as to why you want to have that threesome and then if of course if they're open to it and everything like that then you guys can go a step further and figure out who you want to use as your partner I always tell couples never use a friend or a family member Um, go with someone that you guys don't know Um, even sex workers they're professionals this is what they do they're a great um, they're all great resource to use just because they... So what's a sex worker? Like a porn star? A prostitute, porn oh, star, okay. escort. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But that's what they do. You know, that is their job. And they're typically professionals and they're used to doing things like that along those lines. So they're always a great resource to use. But it's, also, it's all about communication in your relationship. Because a lot of people think that threesomes can ruin relationships, and it can if you guys don't have certain boundaries set. And that's the main important thing, communication and have your boundaries set. Right. Awesome. Awesome. But you just heard a little bit from all of the ladies. You heard about in detail what all of them do. So now we are going to get into some conversation amongst everyone. So y'all hang tight, and we will be back. All right, ladies. So, again, what brought you guys, and y'all can talk one at a time, <laughs> what brought you guys today to want to be a part of the Pop-Up Talks? If you just want to share a little bit um, on how you kind of, like, are you from Atlanta? Anybody from Atlanta here? Anybody from Atlanta? Where are you from? I went to high school here. You went to high school? What high school did you go to? Westlake. Westlake. Okay, Westlake. I went to... Well, I didn't go there, but that's where I was supposed to go, to Doug High School. So, I actually, me and Gwen, the lady that I was talking about, the stylist, we actually lived on the same side of town. And then we moved away, so now we're into other things. But we actually grew up in the hood. <laughs> okay, so, like, moving from the hood and moving, you know, away from it and just finding something um, of sustenance for us to kind of focus on with our careers and our lives were awesome. So, where are you from? I'm from South Carolina. South Carolina. How long yes. have you been here in Atlanta? This time around, probably about 18 years. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 So you from here? Yeah. I was trying to figure out when I could start claiming it, but I think I got it right now. I think you still claiming it. Okay. Right. 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 But no, people are serious about that. Ten year mark. Ten year mark. Okay. Year mark. <laughs> and you said, where are you from? North Carolina. Where are you from? South Carolina. Okay, South Carolina, North Carolina. And where are you located from? Jersey. Jersey. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Okay. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. So y'all see all these ladies have came here to Atlanta. They say Atlanta is the place to make things happen at. So, so far, since you guys have been here in Atlanta, what has been the most fulfilling thing um, for your career that you have fulfilled here? Um, For me, I would say there's a lot of black positions here, and I didn't really find that anywhere else. Um, And it's just diverse. So not only do you have black women doing their thing out here, it is like the Black Wall Street. I mean, it's really everyone's here, everyone's networking, everyone's very successful. So you can find a very powerful group of people here. So would you ever move back home? Yes, because home is always, I'm always going to love my home, but my boyfriend is here, so I'll be here for a while. Okay, okay. You want to share? Um, I think the most fulfilling thing that I have found here is community. 
Um, although I had um, a strong community where I'm from, which is Los Angeles, I have found here in Atlanta, there is a strong sense of community and people are genuinely interested in what you're doing. And in terms of networking, uh, the, the floodgates are open. You know, you have an opportunity to speak with people from all walks of life, from all professions, and really try and make a collaborative impact. And so that's what I'm appreciating most about Atlanta at this time. Well, Atlanta was a special place, and the thing I like about it is that it's not odd to see, you know, minorities, African American women doing big things. I've been in areas where, you know, it's it's shocking that somebody of color is building a business, and it's. But here, it's just kind of like you see everybody. They want to get their grind on, and they want to, you know, uplift the community. So that's why Atlanta is so special. Yeah. For my career, what has been the most fulfilling thing about Atlanta is probably just much, probably like the lady said, connecting with other women and then being able to open a space where brands can come together and share their knowledge, their expertise in all different areas of fitness and wellness. That's kind of been the most fulfilling thing. Um, I would have to say for, um, for my career outside of my nine to five, it has been it's been good. I've had opportunity uh, to be in one movie uh, with um, what's his name? He just passed away. He was on Martin. Tommy. I did a movie with Tommy. Uh, I got the Oprah Network coming up. Yay! Um, and five books. So Atlanta has been really good to me in the ten years that I've been here. And no, I would not move back to North Carolina. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I fight my battles with going back and forth to Jersey, okay? Um, I'm sorry. Um, I think the most fulfilling me, first and foremost, is just seeing that it is the mecca of black success. You know, you see doctors owning their own doctors, black doctors owning their own doctor's offices, black dentists, black nurses, black lawyers, black lawyers owning their own everything. And it's just a mecca of black success. Um, for education, you know, college-wise, everything, you just see it. And I'm not, I'm, I, I heard everybody else's area and their demographics of where they're originally from. And even from Jersey, even though Jersey is a big city, well, it's a metro city, shall I say, you don't really get to see black doctors owning their own everything. You know, you got car sell, black car salesmen owning their own car dealerships, you know, major car dealerships. You see stuff like that and you're like, wow, this, I can't really be all of those things in a place. You found your place for yourself. It's, people be like, it's the Wakanda. I ain't gonna say it's the Wakanda. <laughs> I ain't gonna say that. Because we still got some work to do for it to be Wakanda. But I do see that it is accept, it's a place for all black people. You have no excuse to be here and not become something of yourself. You know, you can come here and you can have a, you, to you it might be minute, but all it takes is an idea and for you to start it and they support it. So that's one thing I love about it. And for me, I got my first magazine publishing. Um, I was inside of a magazine. I'm on, I just did a filming for Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime television show. I'm on, um, it's a docu-series uh, titled The Moment of Impact, for, created and produced by Impact Magazine. Um, me starting my business with my help right here, my mama. <laughs> She's always been my supporter. Um, and, you know, just being the best me that I can and shining and just growing and just building my business and having people constantly support me. Now, I will say... There are some things that I do not like, but we're going to keep it positive. So we like everything. So, but that's, that's how it fulfilled me much. And I just continue, I plan on continue growing. And my publicist told me about this pop-up talk and she was like, you should do this. And I was like, okay, I'm all for talking and being around sisterhood and connecting with other people from all walks of life and women in business. So I'm all for it. So I want to talk about knowing your why and why is knowing your why important? 
for your everyday living. This goes to like lifestyle situations. Why is knowing your why important? I think that knowing your why is knowing why your why is important is really because you want to live a life of purpose. And we've all been put here to do something that only we can do. And until you discover what that purpose is, you're almost, you know, you're not living your best life, as we like to say. We're not living um, the abundant life that the Lord has for us. And so we have to be able to establish who we are and why we were put here. And once we do that, we have then found our why and we're living in that why. We're living in that purpose. We're living in that abundance and we can be of service to other people you know at our best self anybody else want to talk about knowing their why <laughs> how did you define your why how did you figure out why you got up every morning why did you want to do what you do on a daily basis <laughs> yeah, you go. <laughs> well i'm gonna answer my own question right now <laughs> okay. um well i'm gonna go back to your original question um is why why is knowing your why important I think it helps you to focus because if you are just wandering around and you don't understand what you're doing, what your end goal is, you're just going to be going in circles. And so if you have something to focus on and strive for, I think it makes day to day so much easier because you know that you're just not on a hamster wheel, that you're doing something for a purpose. So I think that's very, very important to for anybody to build is to know, well, why, why are you doing this? If you don't have a why, I don't know if you're going to be able to do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think your um, knowing your why is important. And I like uh, Mama was saying over here that uh, if you don't, you're just going to you're going to be stuck. But for me, knowing my why meant understanding who I was, uh, because you know how you have titles and I've been JoJo for so long, but JoJo was wearing me the hell out. Like, she was tiring. And I was like, I don't want to be JoJo anymore. I don't want to be something different. And so, figuring that, and then coming from an abusive relationship and figuring that out for myself. And then, so, that's what wakes me up every morning. Because for like two years, I was locked in a room where somebody told me this, this, and this. And you don't get to tell me that anymore. So, every morning I wake up, I'm excited to figure out whatever it is I... Hell, if I want to fly a plane, I'm about to go fly a plane. You're not fixing to tell me what I can't do. And so for me, just the excitement of every day is, is my why. Because I get opportunity to figure out who I am. Well, I feel like knowing your why, and, I'm, and this goes back to, well, it goes um, or relates to my t-shirt, one of my t-shirts. And my t-shirt brand, and excuse the language, but it is titled Be the Shit. Okay? So knowing your why and and being the shit is really, you know that when you get up every morning, I am smart. I am the bomb. When I walk out of here, I mean, I don't want to be conceited, but (laughs) baby, when I walk out here, I look good. You know, you know, you know, you look good. You know, you have confidence. It's your self-confidence. It's owning who you are. It's having control over you and my why. Because I struggle, before I used to struggle with like self-confidence and not understanding like, why am I not in a relationship? Why am I not married? I'm 37 years old. I'm not married. I'm not in a relationship. And I said, you know what? God probably said, baby girl, it's not your time. It's not meant for you for right now. So for me, it's just loving who I am, um, embracing every part of me, every curve, every every nappy peas in my head everything is just embracing all of it and loving what I have to offer myself because some people say well what can you bring to the table I am the table I'm the restaurant I'm the car I'm the bank account I'm everything okay I'm everything so what can you bring to the table what can you bring into this house so I appreciate my business. I'm glad that I started that myself and, and sat down and really said, you know, I'm going to do this for me. I'm not trying to keep up with nobody. I'm going to do this for me. This is what I love to do. This is what this is who I am. And I stuck with that. 
So I just feel like your self-confidence and knowing who you are, believing in yourself, not allowing no one to take that power from you, owning your power, keeping your power, and just keeping God first in your faith. No one, no one can be who you are. So that's just me. A to the men. A to the men. Yes, yes. All right, Miss Mo. Okay, you better let the people know. You better let everybody know what. They <laughs> All right. All right. Awesome. So I want to talk about, um, I guess, um, why is talking important? Okay, so a lot of times, you know, we know people or we've been that person before that was afraid to talk was afraid to speak up and say things why is having a voice important you can come from this in like she just said many different areas if you think about it metaphysically uh, from a yogi perspective you have these energy centers in your body and one of them is the throat chakra and it's right above the heart chakra which is the biggest one that you have so if you can't voice your truth and if you can't say what you need, what you want, who you are, then you're going to be stuck and stagnant energetically, which then will spill over to mentally and then physically. And then you'll start to see the dis-ease manifest in the body. But it all came from the mind. That, that's a word. That's <laughs> that, that. <laughs> the bomb, girl. Oh, my God. Uh, word. I would say that... Finding your voices, and for me, I found that I was communicating the right thing to the wrong people, and sometimes communicating the wrong thing to the right person. But I wasn't communicating none of it to JoJo, and so when I, when she talked about your throat and your heart chakra, when I realized, I thoroughly convinced myself I was sick. I went to every doctor here in Atlanta and said, "There's something wrong with my throat. Like I can't swallow." They did every test. I was like, ma'am, there's nothing wrong. I was like, no, I can't swallow. And then when I started doing the work and paying attention to my words, my throat problem went away. And so it's true that if you if you hold it inside, it's going to show up in your body somewhere. So I learned to communicate the right thing to me. So when I say it to anyone else, it's not open for misinterpretation. What your mama said, I said what I said. And, and that's what I mean. Well... I'll be having a whole lot to say, but <laughs> your voice is very important. And to piggyback off of what these two ladies just said, it is important in relationships. It is important into your work, your workplace, because and definitely in the workplace. Let me get into the workplace. Your voice matters because they will tell. They have this idea that if black women, especially black women, speak up and voice their opinion or speak up of what they, they are passionate about in the workplace that you are being the angry black woman. No. You will not censor me. You will not shush me. And you will respect me. And I'm going to get what I deserve. If I want that position, I'm going to get it. So I just feel like your voice matters in so many different areas. And if you don't speak up for yourself, you especially as a grown woman, you can't expect somebody else to speak for you. It's kind of like when you're playing telephone and then by the time you get to the end, you're like, well, she said, and you, you're sitting there like, I didn't say that. Okay, well, you didn't speak up and say what you wanted to say. So you need to speak up and say what you want to say. Have your voice. Stand firm on it. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to be all of this and all of that, but you can be, you know, strong in what you believe and assertive because people hear you and they respect you. I, re I had a relationship with someone. Friendship. Yes. And, you know, when I spoke up about something that I did not see that it was appropriate or was right, I was called, or oh, I wasn't supportive, or I was this and the third, or I shouldn't have said this and I shouldn't have said that. And me as your friend, I'm not going to be a yes person. I'm going to be like your sister. I'm going to tell you, sis, right. what, what right. you doing? That's right. not right. I'm not going to judge you. I'm just telling you, as an older sister or a younger sister or even a, a friend, I should be able to voice that to you and you can receive it. We don't have to agree, but we can understand that, you know, we're trying to see the best interest of both of us. So a voice is very important in all areas. If demand, you demand your respect. 
Um, I'm going to say that having a voice is the only way to get your needs met. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we go through life with unmet needs. And through those unmet needs, we suffer from, you know, depression. We suffer from alienation and isolation. We suffer from a lot of physical ailments. And at the root of that is I don't feel heard. I don't feel valued. I don't feel supported. And I don't know how to find my joy and my happiness. And so having a voice means that you're literally telling people how to love you. And if you don't tell somebody how to love you or how to treat you in a way that you feel all of those things, then you're literally allowing people to dim your light and create those, you know, help you create those feelings of isolation or unworthiness. And so I think it's very important that we not only have a voice, but we use that voice to the best of our ability. And, you know, when you talk about the scriptures, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth shall speak. And so if you're going to, you know, give yourself to somebody, whether it's in a relationship, a friend, you know, a friendship, a marriage, any kind of relationship that you're in, it should bring value to your life and not take value away. And if it's going to add value, part of that is going to be communicating what it is that you need so that you can get those needs met. And so having that voice is just the way that you really t show people how you need to be loved. And if they can't do that, then you know, okay, I need to separate myself from you because then it becomes toxic. So again, having a voice is the way that we treat, we tell people how to treat us. I think all these ladies have added amazing things. Um, as a therapist, one thing that I've learned is having a voice, is speaking your truth. A lot of my patients, when they come to me, they don't feel like they have a voice, whether it's mental illness, whether it's um, in their sex lives. So one thing that I, I work with them on is your voice is your truth. And you have to speak your truth because you don't know who's listening and who might also relate. And you could be helping the next person tell their story and their story it can help and so on and so forth and when you're speaking you're you know you're using your voice and speaking your truth you're also breaking generational curses and you know that's one thing I always talk about with my patients is if you don't heal then how can you expect your child to heal and your grandchild to heal so it's more than just you know speaking your truth it's about healing and helping others to heal Awesome, awesome. Look, they all said the word, okay? So definitely use your voice. It is important that you use your voice, value um, your voice and your opinions because your opinions matter. Um, it's not up to other people. You know, other people will judge you because of what you say, but it's not up to them. If you feel a certain way about something, then speak up about it. If you are um, in need of help, speak up about it. It doesn't matter what it is. Speak your truth, speak your voice, and let everyone know who you are are and what it is okay so um i want to talk about let's see <clears throat> the current state of america right now y'all so <sighs> black lives matter has been the topic of discussion for it seems like ever since corona started like you know that's when everything just kind of stirred up so um lately well the most recent has been um uh, jacob blake Okay, so I want to talk about how do you guys feel about the current state right now with Black Lives Matter? Um, do you feel like there's something that needs to be done? Is there something that we can do as people um, of color? Um, and how can we kind of, I guess, like help the situation as individuals? Because a lot of people always talk about what we need to do and what we can do and things like that. But nobody is actually like forming coalitions um, and, you know, doing, um, you know, like you said, solutions of, to the problem. So how do you guys feel about the current state with Black Lives Matter? <laughs> so as I stated earlier, I did a Black Lives Matter photo shoot today um, for someone. Um, and it's, it's really touching to me because I have two sons. And one is 18 now. He's in college. He's away from the nest. So it's scary for me because I can't be there to protect him. Like, I can't be there surveillancing him and making sure that he's okay and no one's doing any harm to him. And every day that I wake up, I'm just like, I just pray that my son is okay. He's on campus. He's away from me. 
he's out trying to be great so he can provide for himself as he get older with a better education. And my youngest son, I fear for him too. So Black Lives Matter, it is very important to us. But I also say black lives have to matter to black people, right? Because we, we march all day long as soon as, of course, others, when they do harm to us, especially our black men. But I also speak on black lives have to matter to black people and black women have to matter to black men, right? Because we are always on the front line defending and raising these men we're raising them and sometimes they're in a two-parent home sometimes they're in a single parent home but we're raising these men and then i'm not sure how many of you have experienced where you haven't felt that you was fully protected in a, with black men present i know i have been in those situations so it has we have a lot of work to do within our own community so we have to channel that first for us to be a stronger force to be reckoned with. Yes, the marches can continue. Yes, we can demand justice for Breonna Taylor. We could demand justice for Sandra Bland. We could demand justice for Jacob, Jacob Blake. We, we can demand all those things. But we, within our own community, we have to demand justice amongst each other first. And love on each other. And appreciate and value each other first. So no one can disrespect or do what they do to us. And that's just my take on it. Um, I definitely feel as I feel very strongly about Black Lives Matter, no doubt. I think that we are capable of doing two things at one time. We are capable of fighting for equality and for justice for our people. And we are equally capable of correcting what's wrong within our community. And so I don't think that it's an, an, an either or. It's a definite need to do both with the same amount of um, vigilance behind both of them. You know, I have spent the last few days on the verge of tears because this is a dire situation. It is a 911 situation if there ever was one because our black men, our black women, our black children, they are not safe. And we live in a constant state of uneasiness and a constant state of anxiety. And there has to be an end to that. And so, you know, to that point, we have to keep applying the pressure. You know, I was so immensely proud today when the Milwaukee Bucks stood up and said, we're not playing today. It was a bold move. It was a courageous move. And it was a money move. And I think in a lot of these situations, the needle doesn't move until it impacts other people's money, until it impacts other people's business. And I'm not saying that we have to be destructive in our actions but we definitely have to be wise in our actions and so when you start talking about okay if we can't get justice we not playing i think the conversation begins to change because now all of a sudden you've got people saying you know what what's the problem again okay how can we fix the problem you know it's not an accident or it's not a coincidence that all of a sudden now the national football league is starting to say well, maybe we should have listened to Colin Kaepernick four years ago. Right. You know, when you start impacting people's pockets, it makes a huge, huge difference. And so we have to keep applying the pressure. We can't get lazy. We can't get complacent. We can't start to feel like, well, let's let those people over there do the hard work and the heavy lifting. We have to do everything that we can individually to impact that change in our homes, in our families in our local communities, and then we need to be a, be a willing participant in those bigger protests. So when they're asking you, okay, today, would you be willing to get off social media? Or would you be willing to share this on your social media? Or would you be willing to boycott this particular business today? Whatever those, those what we consider to be little things are, they end up being big things if we can all get on board. When they boycotted the buses in Alabama, they did not know that it was going to be 380 days of boycott. 
They didn't know what they were going to have to sacrifice. They didn't know how hard it was going to be, but they knew that they had to come together and they had to create the change that they wanted to see. And everybody had to be willing to make the sacrifice. And so I think that when we start talking about what do we need in our society, yeah, we need change. We need social justice. We need prison reform. We need the school to prison pipeline to be eliminated. We need our kids to be taught in a way that they can understand, comprehend, and be successful. We need our black babies to be born and to be born healthy. We need our, you know, our young people, they need to get off drugs. I mean, there's so many things that we need. And if we can come together to do that, we can make it happen. We are the most resilient people on the planet. There is nothing that we cannot do if we all come together. And so I'm going to challenge people to, you know, get involved in your local communities and be willing to make some of those tough sacrifices. If you can't go to your favorite restaurant for a while, so what? We're going to have to figure out how to cook at home. If you can't go, you know, shop at your favorite store, okay, we got to find somewhere else to shop. But we have to start, you know, making the sacrifices so that they take us seriously and they're willing to listen to what we have to say. I think she pretty much summed it up. The only thing I want to add um, is accountability, you know, um, holding each other accountable. When you see someone doing something, your fellow brother or sister saying something to them, but coming from a place of love. And then also, guys, please be careful. You know, a lot of my patients um, are African-American and they're watching these things. You don't have to watch your brother your and sisters being killed. So... I know that it's out there and, you know, it's on social media, but you can hear about the story without kind of watching the video because after a while you do get desensitized to it. So you you have to be careful. You got to keep your energy and everything like that safe. So just try not to watch those videos. There are other ways that you can go online and, you know, go out there and protest and be a voice, but just be very careful about your own energy and making sure that you protect that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, y'all. Y'all just said a word again, okay? (laughs) All right. So um, our next question is, how do you cope with, um, like, the everyday stresses, you know, as a woman, as, you know, a mom, you know, as a student, as a teacher, as, you know, whatever it is that you do on a daily basis, how do you cope with being stressed? And not, you know, letting the stress overtake you, not letting your stress, you know, rule your life and just being in like a, having a pity party for yourself, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. 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 Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Figure it out. Yes. So not going to always be there to help you. You have to figure it out. Exactly, exactly. So let's talk about mental work. So when I say mental work, what do you do mentally to continue to educate yourself? So whether it be a book, um, what's a good book that you've um, read lately or a good book outside of the Bible that you can turn to and say that, okay, this has helped me, you know, throughout my journey. This has helped me cope with different issues that I'm going with. This has helped me focus on my career or my business. Any good books? Um, one book that I recommend, actually it's two, is The Untethered Soul, uh, and that's by Michael Swinger. And that's where I learned um, I had inherited fears about a lot of things from my great-grandmother that she projected to my mom, and my mama passed on. Like, nobody could tell me why I was afraid of this. And, and when I got over that and that fear at an um, airport in Austin, Texas, because I worked myself into, when I say a panic, oh my... I didn't eat the day before because I already knew I was going to throw up on the plane the next afternoon. And so I was starving. My nerves is bad. I think I'm going to down the plane. I'm ready to pass out. And in that paragraph, it said, you know, you, who gave you that fear? Where did you inherit it from? I was like, my mama was supposed to be a flight attendant, but there was a plane crash. So her mama got scared and told her, you ain't getting on a plane and folk falling out the sky. And so she passed it on. And so I applied that to my fear of water, my fear of height. Girl, I've been living my whole best life since then. Yeah, so the untethered soul. And then um, I forgot the other one. But it work, It goes through um, you working through your mindset of asking yourself the question why. So I always tell people, understand the, the power of your question. If you never ask the question, you're never going to get the answer. And so you got to know what your powerful question is. And mine is why. Why I got to do this? Who who told me that? Who said relationships got to be hard? I don't believe that. Like I think you lying to me. Like I got to figure it out for myself. So the entire the soul is one of my favorites. Well, I don't really have a particular book, but if you want to read something similar to the Bible, um, A Course in Miracles was actually something that was. It's very thick. It's a lot to get through, but. When you can calm your mind from all the things that you have to do and be for everybody else and take a moment to focus in on you, not only like where did this thing or thought come from, but what do you actually believe for yourself? So being able to even just take a deep breath and open up the belly, open up the lungs, breathe in and slow and hold and release, the shoulders will melt, like everything will start to melt down and melt away. And then you can strip away the things that you were taught growing up that were just forced on you versus as you live your life, what have you experienced? Are you a runner? Are you a writer? Are you a reader? Are you a creator? What speaks to you the most or the best? And then once you fill yourself up to your soul self, right? Get the connection to the Holy Spirit, to God, to whomever you call, and then you can go and pour into others again from a place of love because you can love yourself when you can get back to yourself self-care yoga whatever it is just like whatever is going to bring you back to the center of you um i don't have a book i just have a word and the word is no and i had to learn that and it was so hard for me because i grew up trying to be a people pleaser so if you ask me to do something, I'm going to say yes. And it got to the point where people, I made people dependent and stagnant because they knew, oh, well, she's going to do it. She's going to get it done, this, that, and the other. And it was wearing me down. But then I got to the point where I was okay with saying no, and I felt like I could breathe. Because now, if I don't want to do it, do you want to do it? No. Can you come? No. Will you do this? Absolutely not. And it's okay. It's okay. So when I learned to say no, my life got better. And then I started, and it's not being, because at first I thought it was being selfish. It's actually helping others because if you're okay with yourself, you can give more. You can give more. So say no. Just say no. I feel free. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 
Right. And and sometimes you are helping the other person by saying no. And I'm speaking from experience. I have some toxic family members and I was just enabling bad behavior. And then when I said no, their life kind of got better because they needed somebody to just put the stop sign down. So I'm going to say um, the book Relational Mass really helped me. Um, and I refer back to it mentally often because it really delves into what mask do we wear as individuals that keeps us from presenting ourselves in an authentic way. Um, and so it starts out by addressing what they call two core beliefs that from a Christian perspective, it, it's really hard to embrace. And the first one is, I can't trust God. And it's something that as a Christian, you wouldn't want to say that out loud because it's blasphemous to say, I don't really trust you. Like, you know, I know you out there. I know that you hold the world in your hand. I know that you're almighty and you're all knowing and you're all powerful. But if I'm being honest, I don't really trust you like I, you know, like I say I do or like, like I should. So that's the first thing that it teaches you to really, you know, take a look at. Do you really trust God? The second one is, if I'm honest, I'll be abandoned. Because a lot of times we put up with things or we don't speak up about something because we're afraid that if we say something, then that person's gonna get upset with us. They're gonna leave us. We're gonna sever a relationship. We're gonna end something that's really important. And so it challenges the, the idea that I can't be honest because I'm gonna lose something. But at the end of the day, if my honesty creates you to walk away, then were, did we really have what I thought we had? You know, was it really what I thought it was? And so once you, you start to look at those two core beliefs, then you have to look at, well, what mask do I wear that prevents me from being authentic? And for me, the, the mask that I wore was the avoider. So, you know, I just avoided conflict because I didn't want to argue. I didn't want to, you know, have people upset with me. I didn't want them to leave me. And so it really opened up an opportunity for me to look at myself and how I interacted with other people in a way that it forced me to be more honest and more authentic in my interactions. Because now I'm no longer avoiding it. I'm gonna speak up and I'm gonna say it and it might be uncomfortable and you may have that awkward silence for a minute or they might even walk away, but it is what it is. So really quickly, um, I'm reading two different books. One is The Assassination of the Black Male and that's just a personal book I wanted to read. It's actually from like 1996. Um, but it, it is a bit of, it's a very sad book, but it actually goes through, if you like history, it goes through all the different monumental moments that have happened in black America to black males specifically though. But then the other book that I'm reading, um, for some of my patients to kind of just get more knowledge in my field is called Mental Toughness. It's by Dr. G.S. Baker. And that book is a life changer because it talks about, actually it pinpoints what each one of these ladies have talked about. The power of saying no, um, the power of living in your truth and how you should speak out. And not only that, but it teaches you as well how to be mentally strong, how you can do anything that you put your mind to it. And just because somebody else is doing something that you want to do, you can still do it. And maybe that that career field or that occupation might not be for you. But regardless, you can find um, your skill in life. So definitely, if you're going through something um, as far as trying to find your voice, I would definitely pick up the book Mental Toughness by Dr. G.S. Baker. All right, awesome. So today, guys, you heard from each of these ladies. Again, these are awesome women here in Atlanta. Um, you got to hear what they do. You got to hear um, some of their voices and their opinions about certain situations. Um, and we're going to wrap up our pop-up talks for today. We hope that you learned something, that you took something of value from this conversation. And know that anything that you put your mind to, you can definitely do that. And it's important for us to exercise our voice. It's important for us to come together 
as women and come together as a culture, come together as black people to be able to overcome certain situations. And it's just, you know, important for us to be able to talk about things as well. So we hope that you guys have found that um, the information that was shared today, it adds value to you. <laughs> All right, everyone, before we close out, we do have another young lady that we would like to introduce you to. Her name is Musu. Hey, Musu, how are you? I'm good. How is everybody doing? We are doing well. We are doing well. So can you tell everyone who you are and what you do? My name is Musu. I'm the owner of Mula's Love to You Here, and I'm also a designer, fashion designer. Okay, awesome. How long have you been in the hair industry? About three years. Okay. What made you get into um, the hair industry <laughs> and being a designer? Well, I love everything that has to do with beauty mm-hmm. and fashion. Mm-hmm. And I've always been inspired by the fashion world, basically. So. Okay. Anything that has to do with beauty. Okay, awesome. Now, are you from Atlanta? I live here. I've lived here most of my life, so I will say I'm from here. I did grow up in um, Sierra Leone, West Africa, because okay. my parents are from there. Okay. However, I will say I'm from Atlanta because I've lived here most of my life. Okay, okay. So you've lived here most of your life, so you haven't had any issues with, like, kind of... Um, do you, like, go back there and travel there? Do your parents live there, or do they live here? Uh, my, my mom lives here. Okay. Uh, my dad is back and forth. Uh, they're divorced, so... Okay. But my mom lives here, and most of my family lives here. Okay, awesome. So you say you are in the hair industry. So do you sell, like, bundles? Do you make wigs? Uh, what do you do? I do it all. Okay. <laughs> all right, so she... I sell bundles, wigs, frontals, closures. Um, do you style them as well? Here. Uh, I can get them styled, okay. but I'm more with the manufacturing and constructing of the hair. Okay, awesome, awesome. Can you tell everyone how to find you on social media? Um, my Instagram is Mola underscore luxury underscore here. Or you can go to Musu dot Lahai spelled M U S C U L A H A I on Insta- Instagram or you can go to my website at moolahsloveyouhair.com all right awesome awesome it was a pleasure to meet you moolah Moose. <laughs> <I said Mula. laughs> look i'm so used to saying well, moolah you, you, it's okay <laughs> that's just an abbreviation of my name okay Mo and la moolah okay well i can say moolah there <laughs> all right awesome awesome so we're going to introduce her to the rest of the ladies guys stay tuned again we thank you so much for um tuning in tonight for the girl let's talk atlanta pop-ups and we look forward to speaking with you guys on next week